You're always hearing me say that food matters. Is a hamburger a hamburger? Not all food is created equal. I'll fill you in. Hey, I'm Dr. Patty Barch. I'm a traditional naturopath, founder and owner of Naturally Unbridled Wellness and naturallyunbridled.com where we focus on wellness solutions, not disease management. This is Down the Ridge with Dr. Patty, where I give you seven to 10 minutes of holistic life and wellness information on my way to work. So yesterday I did a video about a vegan diet. Um, I have personal experience with that and then professional experience. It's so foggy, I have to roll down my window so I can see better here. Um, Stop, look, and listen. And so I I talked about that and one of the big problems, if you didn't see that video, that I have with um, some people who subscribe to a vegan diet is that they eat a lot of processed and fake foods or faux foods as I like to call them. (laughs) You might get more than 10 minutes today. I can't drive very fast because of the fog. Um, Anyway, so because I make these videos relatively short. I didn't have um, time to get into uh, a discussion about eating meat. So I wanted today's video to be talking about that. In a nutshell, I believe that we need animal protein in order to have a uh, complete nutrition um, in, in an easily obtainable uh, format. So People will argue that in the vegan lifestyle that they can get all of their nutritional requirements, Um, but it's it's really challenging to do compared to just eating a whole foods diet that is, you know, heavily balanced with um, antioxidant um, fruits and vegetables, more vegetables than fruits, of course, because of the sugar content, but that's another video. Okay, so when talking about meat, and when I say eat meat, it's good for you, um, it, not all meat is created equal. In fact, some of it is created horribly. So let's talk about, first of all, the spectrum. So everything is on a spectrum. Nothing is neutral, and it's either really bad for you or really good for you. And the goal is to try to stay on the really good for you side of the spectrum as much as possible. Nobody's perfect. I'm not perfect. I don't believe perfect should be the goal. Um, But I believe do the best you can, like the majority of the time, should be the goal. So, for example, let's start with beef. So, of course, you know, there's all kinds of push against raising cattle because, you know, cow farts and all that. But um, when it comes to beef, the thing that I despise are these, um, they're called CAFO, C-A-F-O, or Concentrated... um, animal feeding operations. And these are massive, (laughs) you know, when they say concentrated, they're not kidding. Um, These are massive plots of land that are, that they jam a crap ton of animals in. And um, when my husband drove to Phoenix, Um, He went through Oklahoma and um, some areas out there where there were a lot of these giant CAFO operations. And he sent me pictures. It's just, as far as the eye can see, confined cattle um, that are given food and water, but often have no shelter at all. So these animals are often out in the blazing sun with no shelter and no protection from the wind or flies or hail or lightning, right? They, their well-being is not considered beyond how it's going to impact their rate of gain and the profitability for the ranchers that keep the animals in that 
unsustainable, requiring massive amounts of factory farming to um, grow and harvest the grains and the hay that they have to feed to these animals because there's no pasture. These are disgusting mud and manure lots. And this same thing is, can be in poultry production, right? Like these um, chickens that are laying eggs are are, are laying hens are kept in um, very tight quarters um, so many animals per cage so that the, they lay the eggs and the eggs fall down to the thing and um, you know so that isn't great and then the um, meat hens are bred to the point where um, they outgrow their legs and they can't actually walk and some of them starve to death or dehydrate because they can't lift their own little bodies over to get food and water um so you know that and and those animals can be considered cage free um because they're kept in giant buildings and not in small cages so um that's all marketing um but i think really the worst one is pork um because of how pigs are kept in confinement um those poor animals i mean pigs are really intelligent they can be trained like dogs so um, to keep them in these um, often in these pens where they can't even turn around on cement um, just horrible conditions um, for these intellectual animals um, and and they're you know they're given a lot of um, medications because when you grow animals in that kind of confinement they're likely to get disease okay so all of those animals are often fed all those ones I talked about in these concentrated animal feeding operations um, a lot of them are fed uh, genetically modified grains that are sprayed with roundup um, <coughs> and they're not making sorry <clears throat> they're not making a good end product like it's edible but it's not optimal and the more nutritious your food is the less food you actually need um, because it's not just about calories it's about nutrients so ideally everyone would be eating an anti-inflammatory diet loaded with high antioxidant foods that are dense in nutrients to nourish the body and provide the ingredients needed to extrapolate those um, new nutrients from the food and convert those nutrients into new things that include cells, hormones, neurotransmitters. Um, so the solution to that disaster of production agriculture is to eat local and know your farmer. Now, fortunately, since moving to the Midwest, um, in an area where that's a lot easier to do. Back when I was living in New England, it was a lot harder in Southern New England to be able to know your farmer, know your gardener, um, because land is just so expensive there that very few people use it to produce food um, until you get up into Northern New England. Anyway, so now um, there are people especially locally and if you get my newsletter um, from if you go to naturallyunbridled.com a little pop-up window will come up and if you uh, put your email in there you'll get my monthly newsletter and at the bottom I have a whole Cooley Region food resources um, section where you can get um, locally raised beef, pork, eggs, chicken, um, sausages, and then of course locally raised produce so it comes when when it comes down to it if you can eat as locally as possible and if possible to grow or raise some of your own food um that is going to be better you're not going to be for one you're not going to be contributing to the this unethical practices of how these animals are raised um but two you're going to be getting more nutrient dense food that is humanely and ethically raised and you'll be supporting the local economy and not these global um, livestock producing uh, corporations. 
Um, and, and then even the community supported agriculture, that is really a trend that has been growing and growing where you um, invest some money in this farm and in return you get to take home some of the things that the farm produces sometimes it's explicitly vegetables sometimes they add eggs or meat depending on the community supported agriculture or csa that you're participating in so the take-home message from this video is to eat clean eat locally eat humanely and eat sustainably as much as you can Okay, peace out peeps, have a healthy day.